Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Shishma Singh. Today we start Unit 11, Regional Movements. And our topic is Regional Movements, Regionalism and State Formation. Some causative explanation. India has been territorially recognized into 28 states and 7 union territories. Out of this, we have today as many as 31 demands for statehood and sub-autonomy arrangements. They are Mar Maru Pradesh in Rajasthan, Bundelkhand, Purvanchal, Bhospur and Harit Pradesh or Chartland in Uttar Pradesh, Vindhya Pradesh, Baghaland, Rwandajal, Madhya Bharat, Mahakoshal, Malwa in Madhya Pradesh, Mithila in Bihar, Shahastra in Gujarat, Konkan, Vidarbha, and Marathwada in Maharashtra, Telangana in Andhra Pradesh, Korg, Kadagu, and Sagari Prant in Karnataka, Kosal Rajya in Odisha, Gorakhland, and Kamtapuri in West Bengal. Autonomy demands of Jammu and Ladakh regions in Jammu and Kashmir, Bodoland, Kharbi. Anglok and Purvanchal in Assam, Kukiland in Nagaland, Garoland in Meghalaya, and Hamar State in Mizoram. Movements of these states are in different stages of mobilization. Some of them are strong and persistent. Others are dormant but occasionally retreative. What we need to examine here is why there exist so many demands for separate states. Do the present states lack requisite harmon homogeneity of population and administration? From close analysis of the official practices of state formation, it appears that these demands exist because of the non congruence between the cultural boundary and administrative boundary. In many cases, the present states appear to be invented once, which has unsuccessfully attempted to create common linguistic, administrative, and political identity among the people living within the different regions of the state. Even if the invented state has succeeded in creating new pan-state identity, people have not relegated their pre-given ethnic regional ties to the backyards in order to live with this new identity. In fact, people of India live with many identities, but this never means the replacement of one identity with others or the assimilation of many into one. Co-living with many identities is possible only through interconnectivity between them. But when this interconnectivity is either missing or attempt is made to supplement the pre-given ethnic regional identity with invented official identity, the problem of legitimacy begins. This is one among many dimensions of regional movements in India. Interestingly, in the nine states of Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim, Tripura, Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Punjab, Goa, Tamil Nadu, and Kerala, we do not find any 
dislocation between the cultural boundary and administrative boundary of the state. Therefore, there does not exist any significant movement for statehood. In the six major and large states of Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh, there alone exist 16 major demands for statehood. Further, in three officially designated Hindi states of Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, there are as many as 11 demands or movements for separate statehood. The very existence of these demands itself questions the legitimacy of these states being Hindi states and their artificial constructedness. In other words, reason and state are non congruent To explain further in the ethically homogeneous state like Punjab, Tamil Nadu, etc., it is the culturally constructed we that permeates different geographical division of the state. In this type of state, ethnic is contraminous with territory. Therefore, we are having least movement for separate statehood. While the ethnic states cultivate on the basis of pre-given identity, the ecologically distinctive state like Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, Jharkhand and other hill states are having ecologically shaped, constructed and locally ingrained identities. It is the relative congruence of interest destiny and folk affinity that makes an ecologically distinctive state or reason a cohesive political and administrative entity within the Indian Federation. On the other hand, in the composite plural states such as West Bengal, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka, the similar congruence of affinity and interest lacks between the state and people of different reasons. Coalescing together many distinct and mutually varying sub regional identities within one dominant language like Hindi, Bengali, Rajasthani, Gujarati, Marathi, Telugu and Kannada have formed these states. It was believed that these languages would in due course of time succeed in creating a broad regional state identity across the people and sub-regionals of these states. But these languages have not been able to create a sense of imagined communities among two people living within two different sub-regions of a state. Bihar, for example, lacks requisite homogeneity of population, culture and language, geography, politics and economics. This delegitimizes the relevance of state for serving the identific and development requirements of the people of Mithila region. This holds true with most of the above listed composition plural states. What has been stressed about is the fact that though the principle of dominant language may help to create an imaginary state, it fails to create the imagined community. Therefore, today we have demands and movements for the separate states of Mithila, Bhospuri, Briz, Bundelkhand, etc. 
given their histro historicity of identity administration and exclusivity of development these sub regions are potential claimants of separate states similarly bengali persian lok identity has not been able to hold together the ethnic nepalis in the darjeeling hills and rajbhoshis in north bengal demanding a separate state in five district of kuch bihar jalpaiguri parts of the darjeeling and north and south dinajpur another classic example of language not creating an image in community is the demand for a separate telangana state in andhra pradesh the people of telangana cherish their history and tradition of cultural synthesis as their identity instead of telugu language the sub regional identity assumes distinct political identity when factor of internal colonialism generates and promotes interregional disparities and discrimination this phenomena has two dimensions one may many of the sub regions despite being rich in natural resources have remained economically underdeveloped either because of the sheer neglect of their development by the state in which they currently are or ill conceived top down approach of development second survival of one region at the cost of the other region through resources and earning transfers this is what rationalizes the demands for separate states of vidarbha marathwara and konkan in maharashtra telangana in andhra pradesh sahastra in gujarat and kodagu in karnataka there is another dimension of it it demands for hari pradesh in western uttar pradesh is any pointer then it can safely be argued that an economically well off region may seek separate state would in order to retain its status as developed or developing economy now the next topic is salient pattern of movement support state hold from about discussion following salient patterns of regional movement seeking separate state may be discerned in india territory and community are symbolically linked a region is known by the community which lives in it and community is designated and characterized by the geo specifics of the given region the demand for separate statehood arises from the synthesis between the two community and geography a territorial community seeks a separate state in order to be the sole arbiter of its cultural setting political making and economic well-being of the people and territory which it claims as a homeland for them the state formation means creating an institutional political space through which autonomous self of the society is not only expressed but preserved protected and promoted people having distinct socio cultural identity concentrated in few contiguous districts 
within the existing state system seek a separate state in, in order to preserve protect and promote their identity it is argued that a separate state would provide them a political identity and a constitutionally documented institutional space for interest articulation and protection within the indian nation it is being contested that this would enhance their capacity to bargain with the central authority as well as with other states in the overall distribution of political power and economic resources this in other words means capacity endowment which otherwise is not possible within the existing state in which they currently are the cases of uttarakhand and jharkhand movements are important pointers in this regard there is a perceived threat to their identity due to the existence of internal colonialism expansionism and hegemony of a certain other regional or cultural groups this also holds specifically true with most of the sub regional movements in the north eastern part of india they further argue that a separate state would ensure them of a self assuring mode of economic development through better application and exploitation of local resources talents and skills some of the above mentioned regional movements see constitutional recognition protection and legitimization of their respective socio cultural varieties by the state it is at this level that the demand for functional elevation of mother tongue to the level of education and administration is made this also includes inclusion of some languages in the 8th schedule of constitution of india linguistic pluralism is another facet of socio cultural regionalism this in other words means preservation of cultural identity identity factor is extended to delimit states encroachment upon the cultural space of a particular regional community cultural homogenization by the state on the pretext of having a uniform national cultural identity is opposed therefore most of the regional movements emphasize autonomy especially in the socio cultural realms and for exercising autonomy of identity a separate state is legitimately demanded a separate state in this context is perceived as congenial political space through which self of identity is preserved protected and promoted this further means delimiting the areas of influence and interference by the state in the exclusive self of the society this requires periodic restructuring of state society relationship especially in terms of the cultural rights of the people and their subsequent obligation to a broader territorial state arguably state's role is perceived in pre emotional term and not those of interference and such a state society relationship is sought to be provided a statutory basis 
in order to avoid encroachment by any other structures of governance. Located within the realms of identity and development, regionalism for sub-regional groups serves as an ideology through which they seek to define their own administrative and political identity and their relationship with broader territorial state, regional state and inter-community relationships. Regionalism provides them a bargaining space in the overall process of nationalism and federalism. It acts as countervailing force to centralization and allows polity and society to federal. It stresses for a decentralized framework of national unity nation and state building and governance. Being an autonomist ideology, its twofold objectives are maintenance of regional identity and self-devised and sustained mode of economic growth. These two objectives are best achieved as rationalist regionalist claim when they are granted the separate statehood or other structural institutional mechanism of self rule in india as akhtar masid observes despite occasional and remote indications of potential successionism Regional movements do not usually go beyond claiming resource sharing within the broader national context. Regionalism in this sense can politically be understood as a search for an intermediate control system between the center and periphery for the competitive advantage in the national arena. We want to wind up this lecture and thank you so much for your attention.